Well, and joining us now for today's Medical Matters discussion is Dr. Antoine Keller with St. Dominic Hospital. And he's here today to talk about how to prevent your first heart attack. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me again, Maddie. What are some of the things that we can do? Well, you know, I go all over the country talking to people about heart disease. And one of the questions that I ask them is if they had to get sick, mm -hmm. would they rather have cancer or heart disease? Invariably, people say, well, I'd rather have heart, heart disease, disease because I don't want the big C. Right. But heart disease kills more people every year in America than all types of cancer combined. Wow. So it's a very important part of our lives and everyone knows someone who's died of heart disease or who has trouble with heart disease. So it's important to know how to prevent heart disease. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I try to get people to understand is there are a number of risk factors for developing heart disease and there are some that you can control and some that you can't control. You cannot pick your parents, so your genes are your genes. Right. You can't pick your sex, and you can't pick your age. But there are a number of other things that you can control, and it's important for us to optimize these things so that we can reduce our risk of all of these other things ha and, and of developing heart disease. You can control your blood pressure. We have great medicine now to control the blood pressure. You can control your cholesterol. We have great medicine for cholesterol. You can control your diabetes. You can eat a low-fat, low-cholesterol diet, and you can get exercise every day at least 30 minutes uh, and 60 minutes for weight control. So those things that we can control, we have to be sure that we optimize them to try to reduce our risk to the lowest possible risk we can have. What about stress? Is stress a, a huge factor, or is, it a fa or is that a myth when it comes to our heart health? That's a great question. Stress is one of those things that is bad in and of itself and it's also a surrogate for other bad habits like overeating and smoking which is the absolute worst thing you can do uh, for your heart and for the rest of your body uh, you uh, d don't feel like exercising when you're stressed and you have a number of bad habits that are associated with the stress that potentiate atherosclerotic or hardening of the arteries Wow. Now, one of the other questions we have is, do stroke and bad circulation go along with increased risk for a heart attack? Yes. Uh, when people have an increased risk of cardiovascular disease in general, we understand that it's a very pervasive process. It does not only affect the heart arteries or the arteries to the legs or the arteries to the brain. So if someone is at risk for developing an early heart attack, then they're at risk for developing an early stroke and developing claudication, which is pain in the legs as you walk. So those things need to be monitored as well as the heart, and it's important to try to optimize your risk factors to reduce your risk of all of those things. At what age should we become concerned about our heart health? Most of us think it's as we age, but I know younger and younger people who have uh, had heart attacks. Yes, it, we, it's interesting. When we were in medical school, we're always shown these pathology slides of specimens of patients who are very young who developed hardening of the arteries or atherosclerotic disease. And even in babies, toddlers, and young uh, children, we can find some evidence of a progression of atherosclerotic disease. Although it might not be obstructive at the time, there are changes that are consistent with developing this problem. So it's important from a very early age to be very cognizant of your risk factors, especially if you've had people in your family that have developed heart attacks or strokes at a very early age. Now let's talk a little bit more about diet. Uh, are we talking about eating green leafy vegetables? Are we talking about making sure that we add more fruit, stay away from the sweets? Or the, and there's been so much debate about the meat uh, and especially the, the meat that, uh, the processed meats. That stored, study came out saying we shouldn't eat it, it causes cancer and then uh, the World Health Organization kind of backed off mm -hmm. from that. So what is the best thing for us to eat? Because I, I think all of us have bad habits. Sounds like your doctor's been giving you a few <laughs> lectures, huh, Maggie? Yes. Yes, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, anything that is not processed, you can eat as much of those things as you can handle. If you're diabetic, you want to stay away from concentrated sweets like orange juice and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, if it's fresh and uh, you can eat it without, with minimal processing, that's the most important thing. In the South, we like fried fatty foods and foods that have uh, things that make them taste good. Gravy and sauces, yes. And, and Mississippi comeback sauce is really big. So <laughs> those kinds of things, uh, if they're good to you, they're probably not good for you and you want to try to have them in moderation. 
if you can't cut them out completely. And so I tell people, every day of the month you should try to behave and eat a low-fat, low-cholesterol diet. And that one day of the month that you were born, of every month, you can eat whatever you want to eat. And that way they don't feel like they're giving it up cold turkey. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us again. You're we've welcome. been talking with Dr. Antoine Keller with St. Dominic Hospital, and we've been talking about your heart health. So thanks again. You're very welcome. We've